I live in Missoula, Montana. It is a place where on a daily basis, I am surrounded by this incredible, beautiful environment. And on a daily basis, I get to experience the opportunity of being in nature. As my children were growing up, and I would be traveling to various cities around the world to do my work, I would call home each night, and invariably they would ask me, Mom, what kind of wildlife do you see there? And they had no idea that what we take for granted on a daily basis in our backyard is not the norm for most people. My talk today is inspired by the awe and wonder of nature around us. And if we take the time to really learn from the lessons that we can learn from nature, it will change the way that we think about designing new technologies. Biomimicry is a new field for creativity and innovation. It is based on the idea that when engineers and designers take lessons from nature, not only can we develop innovations that have improved performance, but they'll also be environmentally friendly as well. I've been teaching in the field of technology and marketing for over 20 years now. And when I work with engineers at companies such as those from Qualcomm or those from Hewlett Packard, what I typically find is that they have an engineering toolkit that they've learned very well. And when I talk about changing the way that they use that toolkit, there's some entrenched resistance to looking at nature as a solution. But what I experienced four years ago when I heard Janine Benyus speak, Janine Benyus is the woman who wrote the book Biomimicry, Innovations Inspired by Nature. I found my lens on technology and innovation was transformed. And once you hear about the field of biomimicry, you find that you can't conceptualize problems in the same way that you did previously. What I'm going to do is share with you some examples of companies that I've worked with who are harnessing the power of biomimicry to change the way that we think about solving the problems that we face in society today. Biomimicry is being used in a wide diversity of fields. One field where it's being used is in energy production. Today we're looking at wind energy as a source of power, and the blades of wind turbines are often smooth. But when we learn from nature and we look at the flipper of a humpback whale that has a scalloped edge, and we mimic that scalloped edging on the blade of a turbine, we can actually increase the electrical production of that turbine by 20% compared to a smooth surface. When we study the way that kelp moves in an ocean floor and mimic that, we can harness the power of the ocean currents. When we look at the beauty of a termite mound that maintains a constant air temperature with no heating or air conditioning despite fluctuations of cold nights and hot days in the desert, and we mimic that airflow in a building structure in Zimbabwe, the building actually uses 90% less energy than a building that has traditional heating and air conditioning systems. This is a coral, and the building blocks of coral are being used to reconceptualize the recipe for cement. And in this case, uh, Calera is building cement based on the recipe of how coral builds its, its structure, and in doing so, they're actually able to sequester CO2 rather than release CO2 in the production process. Two companies that my students and I have worked with at the University of Montana to develop commercialization and marketing plans are Sharklet Technologies and Columbia Forest Products, and I'd like to highlight those for a moment. Sharklet Technologies is reconceptualizing the way we think of cleanliness in a healthcare setting. One of the predominant problems in healthcare today is MRSA, which is an antibiotic-resistant staph infection. In fact, 99,000 people a year die from hospital-acquired infections. And our ostensible human ingenuity to solving this has to been to develop ever more powerful cocktails of drugs. But the fact is, the bacteria mutate. 
and in this escalating arms race, the bacteria are winning. When we take the time to step back and ask the question, what organisms in nature actually shed bacteria naturally, Sharklet found inspiration in the skin of the shark. The skin of the shark is comprised of unique denticles that have a pattern of hills and valleys that you see replicated here in a blown up fashion. Sharklet mimics, mimics this unique pattern of hills and valleys in a surface coating to nurse workstations. Columbia Forest Products makes plywood among many of the products that it makes. And one of the key ingredients of most plywood is formaldehyde. Formaldehyde obviously causes problems at the manufacturing site, but then it also off-gasses into the environment once it's placed in people's homes and offices. Columbia Forest Products step back and ask the question, what organisms in nature have strong adhesive properties without relying on toxic ingredients? And in this particular case, they found inspiration in muscle shell secretions. The secretions of the muscle shell actually are comprised of a unique molecular structure. And when this molecular structure is mimicked in a soy-based protein and used as the adhesive to make plywood, not only is the plywood toxin-free, but it also has enhanced durability and water resistance as well. Clearly, nature is coming up with much better solutions than our human ingenuity. And if we take the time to integrate biomimicry in our innovation protocols, we'll be able to bring our industrial practices back in harmony with nature. The real question then becomes, in my mind, as an academic researcher, what are the best practices to follow from these companies that are harnessing biomimicry in their organizations? I've made a significant investment in my uh, career for the last four years to figure out how companies are harnessing the power of biomimicry. And the research that I've been conducting this past year under the funding of a nonprofit in Boston, the Marketing Science Institute, with two colleagues, we've talked to approximately 40 industry leaders who are trying to develop new protocols for innovation that are more sustainable. And although our findings are preliminary, we have two key characteristics that separates companies that are successfully harnessing biomimicry from those who are not. Think about the way product development works in most of your organizations. Typically, there's an engineer, and the engineer brings the technical knowledge and the tricks of the trade that they've been taught. There's oftentimes a business or a marketing person who brings the perspective of, what is the value proposition for the customer, and what kind of value does that give to us as a company? There's oftentimes a designer who's been trained in human design thinking. And reconciling those disparate perspectives in product development is often a conflict-ridden process. Now we're going to add another voice to the product development process, and that's going to be the voice of the biologist who brings the knowledge of how does nature do this. And I'm here to tell you that harnessing that biology perspective is critical to unleashing the power of biomimicry in product development, yet it's extremely complicated simply because of this diversity of perspectives. Our research shows that having an internal champion who can effectively mediate those disparate voices to harness that biologizing of the design process is a critical ingredient to unleashing this power. A second factor is that what we're finding is companies who successfully harness biomimicry bake biomimicry into the DNA of the organization itself. And the way they do this is they begin to establish different metrics for success. They question the very assumptions that underlie their business model. And oftentimes, they start to rethink their business in a service-oriented capacity rather than the consumption of items that are sold and given to a customer. What can you do to harness the power of biomimicry in your own organizations, in your own lives? There are quite a few useful books on this topic. In fact, I think you'll be surprised when you go to the internet and just Google the word biomimicry. There are a number of organizations that provide very um, amazingly inspirational trainings and workshops on this topic. This is a global phenomenon. In addition, there's a very cool website called asknature.org 
that helps you to biologize the design. What you see here is how does nature create color in an iridescent display with no electrical production required. Qualcomm has introduced the Marisol display technology based on this exact phenomenon. I'm going to continue my biomimicry journey. And uh, living in Missoula, it's actually pretty easy to be inspired by nature on a daily basis. I invite each of you to take the opportunity to immerse yourself in the lessons that nature has to offer. It's taken 3.8 billion years to evolve and adapt elegant yet simple solutions that can solve our problems if we take the time to learn them. And in this particular case, we can bring our industrial practices back in harmony simply by asking the question, how does nature do that? Thank you.